When uh, Sergei Parajanov made the call of pomegranates in 1969, it was actually a few years after his first feature-length film, The Shadows of Forgotten Ancestor, which is considered his most Ukrainian film. And at that time, he already got worldwide attention and critical acclaim. The Call of Pomegranates is his most Armenian film. Armenian film not only because it tells the story of an Armenian poet, but also because it includes a lot of different Armenian references. Obviously, the language, the music, the Armenian craft, the Armenian textile, the Armenian architecture, the Armenian manuscripts. So there are many, many different references to the Armenian culture and language and history. So the Call of Promkonets tells the story of Sayat Nova. Sayat Nova was an Armenian lyrical poet of the 18th century also known as a troubadour. And obviously it was the opportunity for Prajanov to touch upon an important figure in Armenian literary culture. But I think more than that, um, it was also a great opportunity for Prajanov to elaborate on his own poetic world. The film is not a so-called traditional or classical biopic. So for instance, if you expect the film to tell you um, all about the facts, the historical context, and the whereabout of this poet, Sayat Nova, you will probably feel very frustrated. The Call of Pomegranate is often conceived as what we call poetic cinema, meaning a film that is not plot-driven, a film that uses very specific element of uh, visual poetry, like, for example, visual rhymes. Parajanov is very much influenced by the art of painting. That's why probably every shot or maybe every sequence of the film could be seen as the artwork in itself. It kind of mimics the dynamic or the style or the pictorial composition of a painting. The images are following a specific rhythm or are following specific geometric patterns. Certain elements um, are also repeated throughout the whole film. It plays with verticality and horizontality, but also with circularity, also of moving from back to forth and left to right and right to left, etc. So there is this sense of a very rhythmic, choreographic and geometric mise-en-scene. The characters in the film have also a very uh, peculiar way of acting. They do not act as we would see in a narrative classical biopic film, but they have a way to engage their body and to engage their face that actually directly address the camera. And this is very reminiscent of the early days of cinema. The ways the actors move might also recall choreography or dance or even a certain tradition in theater. Parajanov plays with the costumes of Sofia Caccherelli, this uh, Georgian actress who plays uh, not only Princess Anna, who was one of Sayat Nova lover, but also Sayat Nova himself when he was a young poet. It's also a way to destabilize the notion of sexual identity as well. One Sparazanov said, literally, that his love for things is not a hobby. His love for objects, his love for things, is actually part of his aesthetic conviction. They're not just a prop or something that is decorative or something that is supposed to accessorize the characters in the film. They really exist on their own. They perform on their own. It's like the object that we see in almost every shot of the film is actually acting. In this film, there is a sort of horizontality between humans, animals, nature, material objects, as though he was proposing a poetic transgression. 
inviting us and inciting us to cross the boundaries, to cross the limits, to destabilize our norms and expectations. When we watch this film for the first time, we are probably struck by the abundance of not only objects and symbols, but also of many different artistic and cultural references. But what is more interesting that even though we can archaeologically uh, look for all these different references, he succeed in creating his own world. This poetic combination of, on the one hand, referring to the past, referring to ancient and archaic culture, and at the same time, as it were, creating a new culture, his own visual, grammar, language, and iconography. When the film came out uh, in 1969, and unsurprisingly, probably, the film was censored for different reasons. Too much aesthetics, too cryptic, too hermetic, too complicated, too much religion, probably too much Armenian, and actually not aligned enough with the Soviet ideology of the time. Nevertheless, in the world of cinema, more broadly, so outside of the region, so to say, the film was very well received, admired by many filmmakers, and considered still today not only as one of the greatest work of art of, of film uh, in Armenian cinema and Caucasian and Soviet cinema, but also of what we call world cinema. We understand also, I think, why Prajanov has been so inspirational for many artists, not just filmmakers or architects and musicians, designers or fashion designers. And I think a great example of that, a recent one, is Lady Gaga music video 911 from 2020, directed by Tarsen Singh. Lady Gaga's music video follows almost shot by shot certain scenes of the film. What I find very interesting is that this popular form, which is music video, is a very, I think, interesting way to reopen the archive of cinema. So it's not only a tribute of an homage, but also we could say a cinephilic gesture to open up a new world to uh, an audience that is probably very unfamiliar with the oeuvre of Parajanov. When you watch the film for the first time, somehow that you like it or not, it stays with you. And I think this is also one of the reasons why many different artists are deeply inspired by the film. And I would even add that in the same way that Pajanov himself was inspired by so many different art practices and, and, and artistic and visual tradition, it does that in return. So it's like Pajanov invites us to create more and to be poetic. The singularity of the color of prom grenades is not just that it creates a very innovative and probably unique aesthetics, but it also creates a unique filmic experience. I could even go that far by saying that every time we watch the film, we watch a different film. Every viewing experience is a new experience. And that contributes a lot to the poetics of the film and the poetics of Prajanov world, more generally speaking.